In this video, we are going to take a look at the bar inside of Qtile. As you can see by default, you have a pretty boring bar with some uh, widgets enabled. But uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at the widgets that you can add to Qtile, uh, the options that you can uh, give to the different widgets, colors, for example. Also, how you can add Unicode to basically have this uh, power line effect inside of your bar, and that will make your bar look a lot more nicer. But the first thing that you probably want to know is to uh, know where to look for the built-in widgets. If you go to the official documentation, you can just click underneath the built-in widgets and there you will uh, see or find all the widgets that are available to us. There's also the uh, option to build your own widgets, but yeah, that, uh, that's something that we can cover in another video. But yeah, there's already a lot of uh, widgets available to us. Uh, for example, if you want to take a look at the CPU widget, this displays the CPU load and frequency. And the doc documentation also provides all the uh, different arguments that you can pass to that specific widget. So, for example, the background color, the font, uh, the font size, the foreground color, uh, also how to format uh, the widget in this case, uh, padding, and so on. And... Uh, if you take a look at the config file, uh, there's also this right here, this, uh, I guess, dictionary uh, that uh, provides some default values for your widgets, like the font that it should use, the font size, and also the padding that you want for all the widgets. And yeah, I'm going to take a look at, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, configurations that I have made for this video. And to do that, we're going to delete these lines right here, which are the, yeah, these are the default widgets that you basically get. Uh, but yeah, we don't need that. So, oh, yeah. So you can add a background color right here. Uh, I'm using the Gruffbox color scheme. So I'm using the background color for Gruffbox. And this right here, I wanted to, 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 to delete those. And then... These are all the widgets that I have configured. I'm going to take a quick look at them. So I'm going to uncomment those. Let's go back to the top right here. So this is the group box where all your groups are being displayed. And you can configure basically how they are uh, highlighted. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, the default one has this border for the, uh, for the current selected group that we are in. The active groups are white, and the inactive groups have th has this uh, gray uh, color. And uh, you can change that, for example, by uh, changing the highlight method. I use line uh, because that way I can uh, change the highlight color to background and also the uh, highlight text color, this one right, uh, right, right here, to red. So the selected group will be red. And then the active groups will be gray and the inactive uh, groups will be dark gray. Now, and there's also this thing right here, disable drag is uh, by default false. And that allows you to basically drag a group like this and then uh, put it somewhere else. Uh, I don't really care for that. So I want uh, the disable drag to be true. And this right here, the right arrow function that you see uh, being called right here. This is basically how, how I define, uh, uh, how I return a Unicode value. So if we take a look at this function right here, I have several uh, functions that return uh, this text box widget right here with a text value of a Unicode. And then with some other uh, like padding, font size, and the background and foreground color that is passed into the function. And you can provide the color when you, uh, whenever you call them. So yeah, that's basically how I uh, uh, create my widgets and have some uh, nice looking effects to, uh, to them or styling, I should say, not effects, style, styling. And yeah, so I use the window count, uh, what else, CPU, memory, uh, the internet speed with the net widget, clock, sysray, and the spacer right here. That is just to add some empty space because the sysray, um, by default is very, uh, the padding on the right side at least is uh, basically non-existing. 
So uh, I don't really like that. So that's why I uh, use the spacer widget right there. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So if you take, for example, to the uh, at the CPU memory, uh, yeah, CPU memory and net, net already by default uh, has this right here to display the uh, down and uh, net, uh, the down and upload speed using these uh, this icon right here. For the uh, memory, I use this brain icon uh, right here, and for the CPU, I use this uh, icon right here. And you do need to use nerd fonts to be able to display them. And also to search for a, a nerd font, you can take a look at the nerd fonts cheat sheet. If you Google for that, then it should be probably the first or second uh, search result. And this right here, I want to change to Terminus TTF nerd font and the font size I basically set to 13 and the padding for all the which is I would like to have 10. Now, if I save this, and yeah, I don't have any nested X servers running, so we can take basically check if I don't have any issues in my config. Yeah, it seems that I don't have any issues, and this is what we will get when we reload the config file. So let me close that, kill the nested server, and then just reload everything. And then as you can see, a reloading doesn't take a lot of time. And this is what we get right there. So yeah, I really like this. Um, actually, my current setup doesn't uh, use this, but uh, this is just uh, a demonstration of what you can do with uh, the QTAL bar. And yeah, if you like something like this, you can take a look at my uh, dots file. I will be linking those in the description box. But yeah, this is just to give you a general idea of how to configure the uh, bar inside of Qtal. Perhaps I can show you uh, something else if we go to the bar. For example, this right here. Uh, if I go to the uh, Unicode module, I also ha have this lower left triangle. We can take a look at that. So I'm going to change this. Oh. I'm going to change this and then use left, lower left, lower left triangle. What I'm going to do is copy this right here and then change the function in lower like that I still yeah so that should be imported as well yeah so and let's see if I have background color and foreground color that should be okay let me just reload it and see what happens oh yeah okay so this actually needs to be BG for the background color and this dark yellow Yeah, and as you can see that you go, you'll get this effect right here. I can do the same for uh, this one right here, lower left triangle. And then I guess I have to turn this around like this to, and if I reload this right now, yeah. Then we get that effect. And yeah, the same, I have to change it at, uh, at this place as well lower left triangle and then this needs to be changed to yellow for the foreground color and the background color should be uh, the rough box background color and now if I reload that's the effect that you get if I if, if you use this Unicode right here yeah so that is how, how you can configure the QTAL bar uh, if you like this uh, don't forget to leave a like uh, leave a comment and also if you're new to the channel and you like to see more content like this uh, don't forget to subscribe <music>